Since the arrival of Lalo Salamanca, the presence of Gus Fring has somewhat faded to the background. Now, to be fair, Gus appeared in nine of the ten episodes in season five and did have a handful of awesome scenes. His madrigal presentation was a great reminder of his civilian mask, which we don't see too much of in Better Call Saul. His one-on-one -on -one scene with Mike, where they talk about revenge, was great. I'll actually get back to that scene in a little bit. And of course, his intense showdown with the mighty Lyle over the Friars was an all-time great Gus moment. I suppose many Better Call Saul fans, including myself, are just following the natural inclination to be captured by what is new and different. Tony Dalton infuses his portrayal of Lalo with a likability that I don't think many fans expected to see from an antagonist. And Lalo is Gus's antithesis in many, many ways, and their battle in Season 6 is something I cannot wait to watch. But today I'm not going to be talking about Season 6, I'm going to be talking about what happens after Season 6. I've actually already made one video on this topic, you can check that out if you're interested. In that video, I mentioned the possibility of a spinoff that focuses on Gus Fring's life in Chile. It's an idea that has been floated around by many fans, but a few weeks ago the idea was brought up by Gus Fring himself. In a recent interview with Esquire, Giancarlo Esposito sort of pitched his own idea for a TV show called The Rise of Gus, and despite this show being very unlikely in my opinion, his comments do tell us some very interesting things about Gus and how Giancarlo has tried to portray him. Once again, the quote from Esposito that I'm about to read comes from an interview with Esquire. I will leave a link in the comments below. I have this whole storyline in the back of my head that he came from political royalty. I feel like Gus came from the world of order and that his order came. He was a military man. Out of the military, he gained the ability to observe. You can't lead unless you can follow. In my brain, he was a high up in the military government. He could have stayed there and ran the country. It was handed to him, but he chose a different path to be his own man and to find his own power, regardless of what he was handed. This is what he chose. I'm sure when most of you hear that, you think about the character Giancarlo Esposito is playing in Far Cry 6. If you haven't seen the trailer for Far Cry, he's playing a fascist dictator in some Caribbean country, basically a Fidel Castro-like leader. So maybe for that role, Giancarlo is just playing Gus if Gus decided to take on the reins of power. Definitely makes me want to buy the game. In terms of the spin-off possibility, there are some glaring barriers. First of all, Gus would need to be recast, Giancarlo will be far too old, and honestly, I wouldn't really want to see anyone else play Gus, unless maybe for a flashback or something. Also, Vince Gilligan and Peter Gold have already said that they've probably spent enough time with these particular characters in this particular world, so it's probably time for a change. So, I don't see it happening, but it's very, very cool to hear Esposito talk about Gus's backstory. Every character in Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul has one character flaw that either leads to their own destruction or the destruction of those they care about. Gus's fatal flaw is definitely hubris, and this particular backstory helps greatly in understanding why that hubris is present. If Gus came out of political royalty, he would have become accustomed to people kissing his ass a lot, but Gus wasn't content to live off the power of his name, and it isn't surprising that he'd thrive in a military environment. We've seen Gus's ability to organize and defeat his enemies in a variety of different creative ways. So Gus leaves to forge his own path and runs into Eladio and Hector Salamanca. There's been a lot of speculation about Gus's relationship with Max, but putting that aside, I think a big part of Gus's obsession with getting revenge on Eladio and the cartel is the desire to satisfy his own pride. Like, how could these men do something like that to me? Going back to Gus's talk with Mike, in that conversation, Gus tells Mike that yes, me and the Salamancas may both be selling drugs, but I'm different. That could be taken as the way they conduct business, but it is worth remembering that Gus is not against using violence and fear to achieve his desires. He threatens to kill Walt's entire family, for instance. So Gus and Hector aren't as different as their temperaments may suggest. I think a part of what he's saying to Mike here is, I'm above these people. If you work for me, you're not going to be working for just some drug dealer. You'll be working for someone who can achieve whatever he desires. Of course, Gus's hubris ends with him getting blown up in a nursing home, and it's the perfect ending. Because from the very beginning, Gus never really saw Walter as a true threat to his goals. Walter was just a high school teacher who wanted money for his family. Once Eladio and the cartel were killed, Gus's true enemies in a real sense, he probably felt invincible. There was no way that he would go down to someone like Walter Hartwell White. I wonder that if Gus knew Walter's history, if he knew that Walter was a co-founder of a billion dollar company, if he would have showed him a little bit more respect, 
Because I think Gus respects competence, not power per se. Gus doesn't care about drugs. He's not a user like most of the other cartel heads. The drug world is simply the place where Gus's talents could be properly utilized. He's a chess player. He enjoys getting the better of people. In fact, the only genuine smiles we ever see from Gus comes when he's just made a successful move. I expect that Gus will get the better of Lalo in Season 6, and I'm very excited to see how he does it, because despite getting killed in what was basically a Hail Mary move from Walter White, I think it's fair to say that Gus was the best player of the game, and the thinking behind Giancarlo's performance really helps explain the origins of his genius. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you have any thoughts on Gus's background or anything Giancarlo said in that interview, feel free to let me know in the comments section. And if you're interested in more Better Call Saul or Breaking Bad content, remember to subscribe on your way out. Have a fantastic rest of your day. I will talk to you soon.